Hey everyone, welcome to the Smoking the Barrel Show where our passion is cigars and firearms. And today, our topic of discussion will be what mod reduces recoil the most? All right, hey everyone, um, thanks for tuning back in. Um, Ho and I just got in from smoking this amazing beautiful opus x lost city by toro fuente it was amazing all right and today's episode will be you know what reduces perceived recoil the most um and the platform that we chose was a glock 19 platform and Ho, oh, did you want to kind of explain to everyone how we ran our experiment? Yeah, so we chose the Glock 19 platform just because it's so ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the Honda Civic or the Fast and Furious Ricer modded uh, firearm out there on the market. And it's There's just so much aftermarket support. There's so many mods that are cheap for it. Yeah. So our base platform uh, is, is the Glock 19. Okay, yeah. You know... What, you know, what, if you needed something, I mean, Glock 19, there's an aftermarket for it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the three different factors that we, ha or the three different variables that we chose was, one, a weighted mag with a light. Weight, yeah, just weight. added weight. Yeah. And then a compensator. From Agency Arms, by the way. Oh, nice, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. And a ported barrel. I hate this thing. Oh. Uh, this particular slide has a window cut so that the ported barrel has an exhaust mm. bent. Oh, true, true, true that word. And, oh, also, first thing, um, you know, for our audience, should we kind of show them that? Oh, clear? yeah, yeah. You want, okay. um, yeah. So, we did check these for clear beforehand. Mm -hmm. Clear. And no mag. And the mag is empty. Yes. Awesome. All right. Let me get this. Clear. Clear. No mag. Awesome. What was your prediction that you thought would be the winner for reducing the most recoil, pretty much? Yeah, I didn't think any one, but if you started stacking them, I thought that the combination oh. of the added weight, because, you know, added weight, uh -huh. more mass, more, less, uh, more perceived, sorry, less perceived recoil. Uh -huh. uh, so between the, the, the light, uh, and the weighted mag and the compensated barrel, I thought were kind of going to be the, the winning combination mm -hmm. in terms of uh, reduced uh, perceived recoil. Yeah. And yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, no, actually, I'm along the same lines. I mean, I thought that the compensated barrel would do the best just because as the bullet exits, uh, you know, the muzzle of the barrel, you know, it's forcing a bunch of the air up and I thought that would help it just kind of shoot a little bit flatter. Yeah. Um, let me, let me actually... Pause for a second. So we use the Mantis X uh, sensor system, which uh, plugs onto the, the Picatinny rail, and it has a bunch of other training uh, exercises in there. But for this particular experiment, we use the recoil analysis uh, function on it, and there's four different metrics that the, the Mantis X covers. It's the, the muzzle rise, that's the peak angular rise of the gun uh, after it's shot, and it also recover, uh, measures recovery time, time for the gun to return back to a stable uh, original point of aim. The recoil angle, angle to the left or the right as it, as it recoils. And then the recoil width, which is the width of the loop formed by the upward and downward movement of the gun. <laughs> so for the purposes of this experiment and from our own ex uh, metrics that we, that we tracked, we're pre pretty much going to focus on the muzzle rise. That was the most mm. consistent metric mm. that we got. And some of the other metrics, maybe not as relevant to this particular experiment, yeah. but still as interesting, uh, yeah. still still interesting metrics to capture, especially for training. Yeah. We're mo mostly focusing on the, the muzzle rise yeah, just yeah, to focus yeah, yeah. on that one metric. I mean, the other metrics could be helpful, you know, just like the, you know, the one that measures the uh, left and right, maybe yeah. if you're like a new shooter and you jerk the trigger, that'll kind of help shed some insight on that. But for this purpose, Going with the muzzle rise. All right, so, ho, oh, uh, what's the results? So, uh, just for reference, in terms of the results, our Glock 19 baseline uh, had a peak muzzle on average mm -hmm. over five, uh, five shot strength 
uh, of 17.9 degrees. 17.9. So, that, so that's our baseline with a factory OEM clock. Yes, it has RMR on it, but factory baseline mm. just short of 18 yeah. degrees. And this muzzle rise. Sun on it. Yeah. yeah. This Glock 19 clone platform, basically adding the weight of the the, the TLR A TLR7 and the brass base pad. Uh, that reduced recoil bit down to um, 11.3 degrees. So already quite a difference okay. from the, the baseline Glock, uh, Glock 19. So th for this firearm, with purely weighted mag and the light, it dropped down to what number? 11.3. 11.3. From 17.9. 17. Okay. Right. So then the compensated barrel, without the weight, just a compensated barrel, it reduced the peak muzzle rise down to 9.7 degrees. 9.7? Yeah. Woo. Down from 17.9. Okay. Wow. It. Okay. And the most surprising result was the ported barrel. So with the ported barrel with no weight on it, reduced the muzzle rise to 7.8 degrees. 7.8. That's barely, uh, you know, a, a, a flip of the wrist. <laughs> We need a protractor. We don't have a protractor. <laughs> it's very low compared, yeah. compared to the 17.9. Oh my god! That is less than half. So this is the winner. Surprisingly, yes. The the port barrel is surprisingly the 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 winner of the the recoil angle. Now that was obnoxious to shoot. However, oh it had the, because of the 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 window cut and uh -huh. the ported barrel, it shot this big fireball out, and uh, it was it was loud. What was I hate thing? this thing. <laughs> Ho, ho, can you tell us your experiences with all the different kind of uh, examples that we have? Yeah, so the most uh, pleasant to shoot combination uh -huh. was not too far off from my mm -hmm. hypothesis was the added weight and the compensated barrel. That was probably amongst the, the most pleasant to shoot. The ported barrel, so yeah, the ported barrel was actually not that bad. Once you got past the, the loud fireball, and the extra extra decibels, um, it was it was still in terms of recoil control uh -huh. was also uh, up there in terms of uh, uh, pleasantry to shoot because that that recoil impulse was mm. barely barely uh -huh. noticeable. Mm. It was surprising. Okay, okay. My my experiences were similar, um, but you know, we'll make sure we put in some B rolls for this yeah. video, um, but. Now, same B-rolls of Ho, you know, shooting the firearms, and you can tell that his Glock clone has a lightning cut on it. And as you mentioned before, this ported barrel kind of, you know, starts spitting out fire. But at the same time, if you're if you're next to him trying to film, that I got sprayed so hard. I hate this thing. I hate this thing, you guys. Um, my experience with the weight, it wasn't bad. Um, I liked how the weight being on the magazine itself, that this brass mag. Um, it kind of changed the feel of yeah. how I shot it. This this was awesome. This this is a really easy mod that you can just kind of yeah. just buy, put in. You don't yeah. have to do anything with it. There's an OEM Glock uh, mag, but with a Taylor Freelance brass base pad because it's one of the heavier, mm. the heaviest okay. pad that I could find. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys can see like the weight distribution on this is just that weighs seven point six ounces. Yeah, almost half a pound. Almost half a pound. Yeah, like the weight. Uh, speaking of weight, Ray, uh, the OEM Glock was 26 ounces, basically 1.6 pounds. Mm -hmm. But with all the mods on here, with the brass base pad, the light, and the either the barrel or the compensate, compensator, that was 36 ounces. So basically over 2 Ooh. pounds, 2.2 uh, pounds total. Okay. So quite a difference in okay. weight between the two. So if you're a concealed carrier, you know, that's a big factor um i mean i'm big i'm fat so it doesn't really bother me but then for other people it might <laughs> um, i'm just a wee lad <laughs> um but you know what this compensator was a beaut um this is honestly it's my first time shooting a compensator on a pistol um, so the radian Afterburner, oh I yes, I saw that. Different designs of compensators might yield different results, uh -huh. but this Aegis and Arms one was so yeah. the again. The recoil impulse was only nine point seven, so still half 
half the recoil impulse of the factory. Really? Yeah. You know, I'm, this agency arm is becoming like, the brand is getting like huge now. Like, you know, all my prodigy, you know, mm -hmm. the agency arms, the optics plate and all that, they did an amazing job. Like this is easy. Like super simple, you know, intuitive to use. Um, I thought this was a pleasure to shoot. And it shot really, really flat. I thought that this would be the winner, to be honest. It was. It was a very close second behind the ported mm -hmm. plus the weight. Okay. So By like a degree? By like two degrees. Two degrees. Okay. You know what? I'll take that two degrees for this versus this thing. This thing was... It was much more pleasant to shoot with the This was a here. horrible experience. Every time I was like, oh my God. I have horrible hearing. I was with the EOD unit for like on deployment and I could hear this thing. It was very unpleasant. Okay. This, this was no I also no wonder if the the ported barrels reduce the velocity because you're only getting two and a half inches of effective barrel length because I don't know if it starts bleeding uh, bleeding muzzle velocity. Oh, so just a consideration. Oh. Maybe I'll take it to the chrono. Take it mm, to a chrono. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Do you have a chrono? I do. Really? Yeah. God. Oh, Pose tinkerer, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, but... We'll make sure we put in some B-rolls. Mm -hmm. And watching this thing, if you put it on slow-mo, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, All right. Well, you know what? Thanks for checking out this episode, you guys. You know, Let us know in the comments what you think. And make sure to like this video. Uh, and also, make sure you subscribe. Because the next episode we have coming up will be the Smith & Wesson 686 versus the Colt Python. All right. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Out.